so today I am going to be working on this Polaris MSX 140. Um, lady brought it to us saying that uh, it only goes about 30 kilometers an hour. Um, we looked in the impeller here and it's pretty, there's a lot of room on that wearing so I'm going to tear this apart today and get that get into that wearing so first what you want to do is take your steering steering arm off right here and take your vs or your uh reverse bucket uh arm unbolt it there and then you unbolt your reverse bucket this uh reverse bucket off and then we'll go from there so there's your steering arm bolt your uh, reverse bolt and then there's a bolt here and here for your reverse bucket we'll get that far and then we'll uh, I'll show you the next steps okay so next once you got your uh, reverse bucket off and your steering. You're gonna to wanna to go after that. There's four bolts on on there. You're gonna to wanna to take those out and that should pull your whole pump assembly out. Uh, take those four long bolts out. They go all the way. Oh, I can't. There we go. They go all the way back there. Um, all four of them. So let's get those out and uh, pull this pump out. All right. Okay, so I got everything out. Um, when I went to pull this out, this and this, uh, this the impeller and impeller shaft just fell out. Uh, ouch! It's very sharp. As you can tell, the bearing just exploded not 100% certain if that's a crack or not or just a really deep scratch but I'll have to where'd it go there it is I'm not sure if that's a deep scratch or just a crack so I have to inspect that once I get this the rest of this bearing off but my the lady has uh dropped off new wear ring and the tool um if this is she need uh now that i have it apart i can see that she needs a new impeller which isn't a big deal i have a spare one around here so i can get her that and i also have a spare shaft too in case that's completely fucked so i'm gonna get this impeller off the shaft and then start taking these bearings out okay so how you get your impeller off your shaft you're gonna need one of these impeller tools. Uh, mine's on the socket right now, but you just slide that in there like that. Get a Johnson and I need to twist it. Um, I'm gonna spray some deep creep down in there and tighten it back. Well, I got some still down in there, so. I'm just going to tighten and loosen it until it comes apart. So I got the shaft out, cleaned up, and as you can see that scratch I was concerned, or the thing I thought was a crack was just a scratch and it's completely gone now. So now I just need to start, uh, I need to tear this cone off and get the rest of the bearing out of there. And then I can start reassembling this. Uh, I'm gonna go throw my bearings in the freezer right now. And then uh, we'll get to that. Um, I don't know if I mentioned or not, but her, uh, oh, this is off my shaft. Put that back there. But uh, 
This is her impeller. And this is her new wear ring. And as you can tell, it's fairly loose in there. So that's this impeller, impeller is good. Uh, this is my spare impeller. Just needs to be cleaned up. But as you can tell, no play whatsoever, really. There's just a little bit of play, which is good. So she's getting this prop. Um, instead of this one, um, they're slightly different. As you can see, this one's a little bit longer on the cone, but I don't think that matters. Um, it fits on her shaft and everything, so should be fine. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that uh, pump housing apart. Not this one, this is my spare one. And then we're gonna clean that up and put it in there. So, let's get at it. Okay, so I got what's left of that bearing. If you, your bearing looks like this when it comes out, it's most likely time to change it. Well, you should obviously change it before this, but someone didn't. Um, there's the other one. It's not in, it's about ready to fly, fly apart too. So, I just going to wipe this surface clean, scrape this gasket goo off there, and then clean this out a little bit better. I cleaned out most of the the uh, poop in there, bearings and other things. I got that little bit cleaned up, a little bit left to clean up on it too. Uh, try to file these edges down a little bit to mellow them out. And then I can start putting bearings back in and put it back together. Um, I think what's going on with the, I think this piece here, and there's a, one in the middle down in there, too. I think on theirs, they've done some updating on these pumps since the, before. I think. This here is two spacers that have been mashed together. You can kind of, I don't know, let's see if we can catch it. There, see, you can kind of see there's a line where the two kind of meet right here. And I think this was two bushings at one time, but now it's one. So I don't know if that's going to be any good or not anymore. But... I will figure it out when I get there. If it's not, I got some bushings out of that other pump, my old pump housing, or my uh, parts pump housing for this guy. Which that doesn't seem to be in the greatest shape anyways, but it still would work. Uh, anyways, I'm gonna clean this up, and get those bearings back in, clean this up. Okay, so, Got my bearing out of the freezer. This is all clean and ready to be put in. Uh, I got my bearing bearing installer. Got that cheap little kit from Pig Iron. So we're gonna install the bearings, and then uh, then we can install the shaft and the impeller, and then we can start putting this thing back together. Okay, so got the both the bearings installed. Um, I took the center part out of this one to, to see what this looked like and I'm pretty sure this is just two spacers welded together from uh, when the when they throttled on the ski the impeller would chant, uh, ram into this and grind into the top of the impeller here which And wore, wore out the impeller. Oops, sorry. Yeah, so I think it just, every time the, 
actually hit the throttle, this smashed into the impeller and wore into the impeller, wearing this down and fusing these two together because this should be the one in here. Uh, you can see it there off the side. And then this one here and then the impeller on top of that. Uh, but obviously that wasn't the case for this one because uh, they, the people who they got this key off of waited way too long to put the, to change all this out. So yeah, so now I just need to uh, get them some O-rings for this. I'm just going to steal them off my shaft here. And because my shaft is in pretty decent shape. It looked like the somebody pretty much rebuilt this pump and then quit the ski, which is good for me. So I'll put the two O-rings on, put the two O-rings on here and then we'll shove this up through and then we can put this all on the vise and start putting on the, the impeller. And then we would be one step closer to putting all this back together. So quick tip for installing your new oil seals. If you have a bearing left, which hopefully you do an old one, just stick it on top of your seal there and take your hammer and just tap it around until the seal seats right down in there like that. And then don't forget your spacer like so, and that side is ready to go for the impeller. Uh, <clears throat> but I need to install, I need to take this shaft back out actually and install the other oil seal. So I guess it's a good time to also, uh, you don't, if you want to rebuild these Polaris pumps, it's pretty easy. You don't have to go to Polaris for the bearings or the seals. You can get both from your local bearing dealer, which I've done. I've, they're better, better quality bearing anyways. So you'll need two of the 6304 bearings. Um, you can get any, any brand you prefer. I like the NTNs or the SKFs. And then the oil seal. is one second here I need one so the wheel seal is a three zero five five seven dash DL and let me open this and that's what your seal will look like. I guess, yeah. So, um, the, the measurements are seven times 30 times 55 or 30 times 55 times seven. And that'll give you the correct seal and bearing again is, uh, 6304 and you can get this stuff at, at your local bearing bearing shop much better quality than that all ball KML garbage that everyone loves to use um, these are built in I don't know I forget either USA or something I don't know but uh, they're better quality than the KML bearings Camel bearings are absolute garbage. Uh, okay, so if you've never done one of these Polaris pumps before, like I have, um, I thought this one on this side, but it's just way too small. And I got looking at this pump, and there's nothing there. So I took it apart further, and what what they do is they take two oil seals and they both put them both on uh, on this side over here. So I 
put them both in there. So I'm going to put this one on top of that one and that's what it is. Um, I've looked at the explode and that's how it's supposed to be. So I'm just going to do that now then. It was a little confusing there for a second, but we got her figured out. So I'm going to tap that other seal in there. Again, you use your bearing to help push it in. And it'll seat perfectly. You just tap it until it seats perfectly. You'll feel, feel the difference. So I'm going to get that in there and get, get this thing moving. So I got the impeller just hand tightened on. And the manual says to do 100 foot pounds. So I got my torque wrench and I'm going to do three different increments. I'm going to do um, 40, 70, and 100 to make sure it's tight. Uh, I like to do, do it in sequence instead of doing going on full on 100 foot pounds right off the bat. So I'm going to do that now, and then I can put the uh, wearing on, and then I can start assembly on the ski. Oh, I forgot. I keep forgetting. I need to clean this thing out, um, and then put that back on. So I'm going to get at it. So as you're doing this, you want to make sure that it still spins freely, and... There's a hundred foot pounds, still spins freely. Everything's good to go now. Just gonna get this out. Uh, okay, so this is all back together. So now I can put the, put everything back on. Well, after I clean this again, of course, I can put everything back on the ski and I'll show you what that looks like when I get there. So before you install your cone, you just put a little thin layer gasket maker on there. Don't need too much. Just just a little extra caution to seal around the bolts. And uh, yeah, so I'm gonna wipe this off a little bit better on the outside. I got the inside pretty clean, and then I will screw that back on. Uh, I couldn't find anywhere about oil like the Sea Dews take, so I'm just gonna put it back together. And these are sealed bearings anyways, so I don't see any oil needing to be put in there. Anyways, I'm going to do that now, and then we can put this back together on the ski. So one thing I forgot to mention in the video, um, I kind of skipped the putting it all back together part, but um, it's just the same process in reverse as taking it apart. So if you have any issues putting your uh, pump back on your ski, just uh, watch the first part of the video and it just do everything in reverse that I uh, said to do there and you should be able to put your pump back on. So I got everything in there. This is just all our spare parts. Well, spare parts, used parts. Um, they asked me to look at the reverse, but unfortunately this thing is broken and missing a bolt, so I can't really do anything with it. We took it out on the water and tested it. Seems to run pretty decent uh, now that it's got the impeller repaired on it. So they should be pretty happy with it. Uh, so if you like the video, subscribe, comment. Have any questions, leave them in the comments. Thanks. Bye.